The reality is, is that indoor gardening is becoming more mainstream. Over on Instagram, I've started a series on indoor gardening and it's very well received. So I'm going to start doing that series here over on YouTube. I'm gonna go in a little bit more depth than what I do over on my Instagram, but ultimately it's gonna be the same platform. What I wanna do is I want to take soil and hydro and find you the cheapest easiest methods to make this happen a number of you are doing this to save money and to be able to eat healthy food without breaking the bank in other cases you're using this literally to feed your family because you can't afford to purchase the grocery store prices what i will say is even if you do have the budget to buy the organic stuff at the grocery store the reality is is that the stuff you grow at home is for sure organic there's no cross contamination there's no risk of e coli or anything crazy like that so so when it comes to food security and having a fresh meal at home, that is your best option is growing indoors. So I want to go through soil methods and hydro methods. We're going to do both. But the first video ultimately does have to be, should you choose soil or should you choose hydro? Just based off of some very common or known aspects that come with each. What I will say is I do both and I like both methods. Some have their pros and some have their cons. So you can make your decision off of this and then follow along with this growth series as you need. When you think of mess and indoor growing, you automatically assume it's soil. And the reality is, is that that's not always the case. Soil doesn't have to be messy. For me, I use self-watering buckets, which work very, very well. You can also just regulate the way you water, or how much you water and avoid overwatering. Now, the other methods or the other ideas and containers you can use would involve holes or some sort of leakage, but some sort of catch basin, a grow tent, things like that, may drive your costs up, but it will reduce that mess. So those are things to keep in mind. When it comes to hydro, hydro can be messy. You have to consider the fact that you are going to be lugging around containers of water, in some cases buckets of water, depending on how many systems you're running. The other thing to consider is the cleaning. So hydro systems come with tubing, pumps, you name it, and you need to clean them. They get a lot of algae, they get a lot of slimy gunk inside of them. Yeah, Ella knows this. And so you will have to use pipe cleaners and that sort of thing to actually clean that piping out. So when it comes to pests, we usually think that hydro is free of pests. But the reality is, is that is also not the case. If you don't keep your room clean or if you have house plants or if you have it in a confined tent, you do run the risk of things like spider mites or mealybugs overwintering or seasoning in those tents and then ultimately disrupting your veggie. On the other side, you have soil, which usually comes with fungus gnats and things of that nature. But I've done a number of different videos on this channel on how to control those. You can use beneficial nematodes, you can use BTK. There's a number of different things that you can rely on to get that job done. So pests, I mean, I would say soil has maybe marginally more, but the last hydro kit that I just, like the last hydro that I just set up did have nematodes in it. And those nematodes ate the roots of my plant inside of my hydro. So I mean, you're gonna have, you know, duds or pests in kind of both systems, but ultimately I find soil pests to be completely manageable and not something that you should worry about. The next thing everyone's looking for is results. Which one is the fastest? And the reality is, is that they're both the same amount of time. Plants work on something called days to harvest or GDUs, growing degree units. And once those units are accumulated, that plant can be harvested. I do find in some cases, if you've really got your pH dialed in for your hydro, that it may grow a bit faster. But the reality is, is that if you're growing in soil indoors or if you're growing in hydro indoors, it's a very controlled environment. You're controlling the humidity, the temperatures, the lighting, the number of hours of light that plant is getting. And so you don't have as many variables that you would normally have outdoors. So while you may perceive the hydro to give you faster results, the reality is, is that it's likely not quicker it just looks faster than what's happening outside due to the fact that you have an uncontrolled environment whereas outdoors you may have cold soil you could have a cold night you know those sort of factors work into it so don't get hung up on hydro giving you faster results or speedier results I will show you how to dial in that soil or that potting soil to make sure you get results that are just as quick as your hydro and actually the lettuce I'm growing right now in soil is much quicker than that in my hydro 
So the next question comes down to cost. And hands down, I would say in most classic cases, if you're using pumps and air stones and that sort of stuff, you would obviously say that hydro is more expensive. But I am gonna show you a method, the next video that gets released for this series, and the cost is a Rubbermaid container, and then your fertilizers for that. It's very, very inexpensive, and I'll show you guys how to how to set that up and how to get that done. We'll talk about the limitations of a pumpless or a passive hydro system, but regardless, if you just wanna get started in this, I would heavily encourage you just to get a container of soil. It can be a cardboard box, it could be a roughneck rubber meat that is food safe plastic, by the way. It's a number four, which is one of the food safe recycle numbers. Um, you could do a five gallon pail bucket that is also food safe. All these things will work to get you guys started, but ultimately cost wise soil, I do find to always be the cheapest even when it comes to fertilizers and stuff that that is cheaper you don't have to buy the pH up and downs but like I said I'll give you some cheaper options when it comes to the hydro so I guess my question to you guys is what do you want to see first do you want to see more soil stuff do you want to see more hydro stuff do you want to see a mix of the two um, all that fun jazz currently I have cucumbers and tomatoes and lettuce started and herbs started that's just my classic go-to's I can try to grow other stuff. I don't often do peppers and that sort of thing, but you can certainly grow those indoors. There's no reason why you can't. I wanna know what you're interested in growing and how you're interested in growing, kind of what your budget is for this, just so I can make this series really curated towards you guys and what you need. And if you wanna get a head start on this entire series, go head over to Instagram, give me a follow, and you're gonna find a ton of videos that have already been posted. I'll talk to you guys later, bye.